Welcome to episode 328 of the Shared Security Podcast. And this week we want to talk about two interesting stories in the world of cybersecurity and privacy. The first is a story about the FCC, which recently issued fines to the major wireless carriers in the U.S. totaling nearly $200 million for sharing real-time location data of its users. Surprise, surprise. I'm so surprised to hear that a wireless carrier would share our personal location data with third parties. Shocking. But that will be a fun discussion. And we don't have Scott today for a where much, but we do have a story about Google announcing that they prevented 2.28 million malicious apps from reaching the Play Store in 2023. Pretty cool. So joining us for these discussions is my co-host, the always interesting and now the one with computer and internet problems, Kevin Johnson. I think it's now I have computer it used to be Scott, problems. Yeah. So I I don't know what well, that's it okay. Is. Yeah. It happens. It happens to the best of us, man. And the worst of the us, because it happened to me. Oh true. <laughs> well, no, you're not no, no, no. Oh man. So So yeah. How are you so, doing? Besides doing your computer. Yeah. I'm doing, I'm actually doing well. I'm, I'm dealing with a whole bunch of stuff. I'm moving tomorrow. Right. Yeah. I don't know that exciting, but yeah, I, yeah. you know, I was living in an apartment and I hate apartment living and it was, yeah. it was a temporary, I'm going to live mm -hmm. in this apartment for a little while and then, and yeah. then do this thing. And I found a house to rent. Nice. Very so cool. I am, I am moving. I will see how that is. It is actually funny looking at how little I have to move. Yeah. That's a good so, problem to have actually. Yeah, and then yeah. RSA on Sunday. Uh, I will see you there. Yeah. Yep, yes. Definitely. Yeah. So if you're listening to this now, we are out at RSA and uh, we're actually going to be recording a podcast from RSA. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> we'll see how that works. Yeah. Pretty interesting. I arrive Sunday and I don't fly out till mm -hmm. Friday. So. Okay. I'm uh, sorry that you're there the entire I week. Know. That's. But. Well, the you know. hilarious is I get back Friday. And then Sunday, yeah. the Sunday after, I leave yeah. again for ShowMeCon, and I'll be there. Oh, wow. And then I'll be in the Great White North. Uh, I'll be in Toronto the week after that. Oh, nice. And I'm Very traveling cool. a lot. So. Yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah. But, all right, well, let's talk about this FCC fine. Like I mentioned in the intro, right, where I'm not really surprised by this, but I, I think this is a long time coming. Yes. I mean, two hundred million dollars to the to these major wireless carriers. That's wow. really, I, I mean, that's a lot of money. But my I question mean, is, do I get any of it? I, yeah, I mean, how many? Yeah, how much of this money through? I mean, I assume there's going to be a class action lawsuit or something, and you might get three dollars. See, I don't, um, I don't know that there will be a class action lawsuit. Maybe not. And and the only reason yeah. I say that is, I'm, I don't know. I I don't know. I've, I've yeah. long been curious about things like FCC fines is how much of that actually gets back to the person actually harmed. The, the bigger, or just goes in government answer, coffers. But we know the answer. Of course. But I think that the biggest, the biggest note that I have here is the fact that the article talks about the FCC warned the carriers they were doing this in violation. Yes. And the carrier's answer was to not stop doing it. And by, by the way, I'm repeating... I was not part of the case. I don't know any like yeah, any of yeah. that kind of stuff. But but it hey, don't share that information. You're not supposed to share that information. Okay, not we won't, <laughs> but yeah. no, actually the liability is on those people, not us. Yeah. Like like I feel like like if 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 you I don't know, uh, you know, stole something mm -hmm. and the cops said to you, Look, we're not gonna arrest you this time, but but yeah. stop stealing. And you said Oh, instead of saying, oh, I won't steal anymore, what you said was, you know, really, cops, you should be arresting the people I'm stealing from because cause they're leaving the stuff out where I can steal it. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they, yeah. Like, they tried to pass the liability t off of themselves. And it's like, I, guys, this, it doesn't work that way. And at least it shouldn't work that way. Obviously, it yeah. has in the past, right? What I'd like to know is was the 200 million dollar fine and it, that was broken up right because it wasn't 200 mm -hmm. million to each of these providers no it was split right? up like what was them, it yeah. 12 or 18 to one provider whatever verizon yeah. got hit the worst they got the and at&t yeah but yeah and at&t my question is 
was is the fine more than they made by sharing the data or did they mm. make like like was this still profitable are they that? still profitable huh. Did they get a good margin on it? <laughs> right. I, yeah. It goes back to like, like I, I just read this thing this morning or, or last night about United Healthcare, and I know this is different, right? Like, I'm I'm not comparing the two, but like it's like, hey, they're they're probably gonna get fined this like billion dollars, but they profited twenty five billion on like I I I Jennifer Shannon and I were she's one of our principal consultants, and she and I flew out in Austin this week and then mm -hmm. on the way back we were finding it off and she quoted something that i had heard before but never really thought about if the penalty for doing something wrong is financial then it really is a law against being poor not a law mm -hmm. right and I, I i don't think that directly translates here but it's related right if if the fine you're getting for doing something bad is less than the money you make on doing the bad thing, we aren't actually discouraging the bad thing. No. We're we're just changing the costs. Like, yeah. And yeah. and I and I don't know what they made on this. I don't think their annual statement breaks it apart that way. But at least nothing I could find did. But I really think that's our bigger issue here is, is that we, we are setting stuff up and saying to people, stop doing this thing we don't want you to do. But, but really it's wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Just budget yeah. it better. Like, do you feel that instead of monetary fines, that there should be like jail time for executives? Like, I mean, like what I, I is going know. to change the I behavior? Don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't either. I, I hmm. like the idea of jail time. I personally believe in in bringing what is it called the pillory, where they like hmm. they put your hands and your head into this stock the stocks right like the stocks like yeah. I have no issue with a law that says if you violate your customers' privacy and security that we're allowed to put you in the public square and people can throw tomatoes at you. I I <laughs> like uh, just tomatoes. Wow, that's, that's very like, gentle. Bricks seem bad, right? <laughs> like. Hit him with a brick. Maybe that's the secondary offense. Right? What, the second time you did what country are we living in? Wait a I minute. Okay. I just, yeah. I look, and I talked about this before when we talked about Joe Sullivan and, and the CISOs being liable for stuff. I, I, I think there's a balance that we have to find where going after individuals that are doing bad things is necessary, is, is not necessarily good. Um, there's problems we can see. I mean, let's let's be very clear, right? We have a commercial prison system in many cases, and right, like we have yeah. serious problems with putting people in jail that, like, like Jennifer's quote, and and I want to be clear, she was quoting it from somewhere else. I just I just don't know where, right? And uh, um, the I always hesitate to say, let's make this a law and let's put people in jail for it because we've seen those systems abused so many times. Mm -hmm. But I also think, and this one's the perfect example of it. Hey, they were told not to, and they kept doing it. Yeah. Right. Like, I, obviously the law is not working then. Right. Like. Obviously. It, if. Keeps happening. Yeah. And, and I don't believe that people who work in corporations are inherently evil. Right. Where they just say, screw the law. Maybe they are. But I think that it's. They, I mean, if 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 I could make an extra billion dollars a year and let's be very clear when I say extra, it would be the first billion I made. But <laughs> okay, like, Elon. I, yeah, like if, if yeah. you said to me, hey, Kevin, you will make a billion dollars. But you're mm -hmm. going to be fined 12 million and I'm making up numbers, right? Like I'm not I, I don't know. The, yeah. But you're gonna be fined twelve million next year if you make a billion this year. I think I'd do it. I'd love to tell you that I'm so ethical and moral that I would never do that, but mm -hmm. you put a billion dollars in front of me and I just had to pay twelve million. Did I hurt anybody? Yeah. No. Am I yeah. sharing data that's probably being shared already? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I'd be okay with the billion. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if I'm willing to do it. And you're nodding your head and saying, yeah, so I think you're in the same boat, right? Yeah, I, probably. 
And and let me be clear. My opinion of you is you are one of the nicest people I know, right? You do the right thing, even when it's not the best for you. And if you're willing to accept the billion with a $12 million cost, I mean, I don't know what the solution is, but I will say sharing location data, I... I live my life publicly. We've had this conversation millions of times. Mm -hmm. I am yeah. perfectly fine with almost every bit of my data being shared. I'm not okay with my location data being shared. I'm okay with it. Let's be clear. You want to know where I am? I'll tell you where I am. I will also tell you that I will handle whatever comes at me and accept the repercussions, right? Yeah. There are yeah. way too many people I know that are in domestic violence situations, that are in abusive situations, that are in... Yep. Right? I know way Major too many problem. people have been sexually assaulted and then stalked by the son of a bitch, evil person afterwards. There are way too many problems with location data being stolen. And I personally believe that we should find out who agreed that sharing this was okay and set them on fire. This is a case where the ramifications of this data being shared is so horrific. I'm cool with the death penalty. So maybe j jail time is appropriate. Yeah. And that's what it's, <laughs> for it's like. It's a balancing in this case. Theme. Yeah. I mean, in this case, with the type of data that's being shared, mm -hmm. let, let's be clear. I, everybody, I've been public about this. I have a problematic abusive history, you know, being abused. I, not me be a, not me being the abuser. At least right. I don't believe I've been an abuser, but you know, that sounds wrong to say out loud. When I was a kid, I was stopped. If I had had a cell phone and my location data was shared, that would have been bad. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm not in the minority here. Like I, I, there's too many people who have been in that situation. This is one of those cases where the data being shared is so bad that yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to go through a building. Yeah. This one pisses me off. Yeah. So. Exactly. Fun stuff. Are you tired of compromising on security when it comes to managed file transfer? Look no further. Meet KiteWorks, the most secure MFT on the market today. KiteWorks MFT suite is not just secure, it's FedRAMP moderate authorized by the Department of Defense since 2017. This means it undergoes yearly audits and continuous monitoring by certified third party assessors. But that's not all. KiteWorks provides a world-class secure file sharing and email platform. Easy for end users, manageable for administrators. With custom integrations, unified console management, KiteWorks sets the bar high where traditional MFT servers fall short. Step into the future of secure managed file transfer with KiteWorks. Visit KiteWorks.com to get started today. That's KiteWorks.com to get started today. You want your organization to be secure and compliant and to have a healthy culture, but your employees' lack of awareness makes you vulnerable to data theft, fraud, and compliance penalties. It's frustrating that the boring static training content that's being used today has failed to improve employees' ability to defend against cyber attacks. At ClickArmor, we know that without using gamification, it's extremely hard to get staff to understand how to avoid threats. Our gamified simulations and challenges have provided a 50% average improvement in thousands of employees' ability to spot phishing threats. Go to clickarmor.ca slash shared security to get your free gamified phishing assessment for up to 500 employees. You'll see quickly how gamified simulations can help your team be more resilient and compliant and help avoid costly ransomware and fraud incidents. Let Click Armor help you go from being an underappreciated, stressed out fall guy to being an innovative leader who's the catalyst for greater productivity in your organization. In some happier news, Google has really stepped it up with removing malicious apps from the Play Store. Now, I, I, I will say we bat, we have bashed Google in the past a long, 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 long time ago. And we will if again. you remember. And we will again. But we, we had done some talks, the Social Zombies talks, I think, were one yep. uh, series where we talked about the 
the issues with Android in particular and the App Store and how easy it was, especially back then, to get malicious apps into the App Store. I mean, it was like the Wild West back then. You could pretty much do whatever you wanted. Yeah. Google made a lot of changes over the years. And I think where they're at today, I think, is a testament to all of the work that they have done. I think there's still obviously more work to do, but they've done a lot of good things. So I do want to give them some credit. I think where credit is due because this is a, a significant milestone, in my opinion. What do you think, Kevin? I, I think it is too. I Dramatic pause. It's, it's not a dramatic pause. I'm trying to figure out how to say it. I think this is awesome. I think this is great that they're doing this, that, right? What I'd like to know is, I, one, I don't understand the numbers, right? Like we rejected 200,000 app mm -hmm. submissions, which meant we prevented 2.28 million apps from being published. Those numbers don't make sense to me, but that's, that's just a, I don't it, get. Yeah. It's a, it's a total of like apps that vo violated some policy yeah. that they have. And with that's app the developers. question is how many of those policies were actually security or privacy related? Right. And I'm not, I'm not demeaning the efforts. Yeah. I'm curious about those. This is the right. Like, like, Hey, this is great. And mm -hmm. let's go one step further. What I'm really happy about is they didn't just reject the apps. They also stopped accounts. Like you lost yes, your, like, did. because mm -hmm. that, like, look, I submitted an app and it was malicious. I should not be allowed to submit any other app. <laughs> really? Like, right. Like, Right, and right. Based on this, that's what they did, which is mm -hmm. awesome, right? The other thing I'd really, really like to see is, you know, they say that they're, you know, the they're trying to better understand what the developers are doing. I'd like to, what I'd like to see is a touch point update on what that understanding is changing. Because yeah. right, like if you're yeah. stopping policies mm -hmm. and those policies are privacy and security related, but then you modify it because enough developers asked you to, that's a bad thing, right? I don't think they're gonna, I, I, right. Like I think yeah. they're going the right direction, but that's, that's the thing I'd like to, I'd like to see more of more information in, mm -hmm. I understand, you know, that's the secret sauce in many cases for Google and I, Apple with their, their app store or what have you, but I'd like to see a little bit more, um, transparency, I guess is the right word yeah. on, on what those things are, because I, I I've submitted apps. I, you know, as you talked about with social zombies, I've gotten apps into the app mm -hmm. store. I've done, I've done stuff there and there were things. And the one that I'm thinking of was actually Apple, not Google, but right. Like mm -hmm. I submitted one and it got rejected and I could not get enough information for me to actually fix the rejection right. for a while. And then I got enough information and it turned out that the, the policy I was violating really was just a nice to have, not even a privacy or security yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, like I was publishing code that was actively malicious and they were rejecting it because I capitalized it wrong. And I'm making that up. That's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. They had no issue with the maliciousness back then. Right? We're talking years ago. Right. But their issue was I, you know, I, I used the word iPhone in the name or something like that. And, right. Like it, I'm, so I'm curious. I'd like to see more transparency there. Yeah. I will say. Yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah, the App Defense Alliance moved under the Linux Foundation uh, is interesting to me, and I have a bias there. Yeah, the Linux Foundation. Yeah, that's is another topic. A weird yeah. organization. Yeah, that is interesting. But uh, yeah, kudos to them, and uh, hopefully, we'll see more transparency about yeah. that in the future. I hope so. so. All Ooh, right. Man. Well, I think that's all <laughs> we have time for today. Kind of a short episode, but uh, Scott will be back uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, he. I don't think he'll be able to join us uh, live in RSA. That's going to be all way too hard to coordinate. Yeah, one remote, I mean, two in person. I don't. I'm not even going to go there. I, yeah, let's let's not even we, try uh, to make that work. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I will. Uh, we'll be doing something live next week, so stay tuned for that. That'll be fun. Thanks for listening, everyone, and until next time, stay safe, stay secure, and stay private.
Thanks for watching or listening to this episode. If you'd like to help support the podcast and get early access to new episodes with no ads, plus many more exclusive benefits, become an official supporter of the podcast for only $5 a month. Visit sharedsecurity.net slash supporter for more details.